How do chemists keep a track of all these atoms and molecules that are extremely small? Well, of course, we use the mole. And I, I know you remember the mole from general chemistry. So, um, and if you don't, that's okay. We're going to review it right now. So remember the mole, also abbreviated MOL. We drop the E to make things easier about it. Um, is the number of atoms in exactly 12 grams of carbon-12, that isotope. That's kind of the standard for, um, for everything. And so let's look at these equalities that we have here on the mole, if you remember. Um, remember that one mole is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, either atoms of just a, an atom like calcium or potassium or iron, molecules, um, molecular compounds like carbon dioxide and water, or formula units like an ionic compound, sodium chloride, potassium, nitrate, things like that, or even ions like the nitrate ion. Okay, that's our first equality that we'll be using, and we're going to be using the unit factor method to figure this all out. Um, we also could say that one mole is equal to the molar mass of any substance in grams. Let's review really quickly on how to calculate the molar mass of any substance. So you'll need a periodic table, and you're going to need a calculator for all this. And so let's say we were, you were asked to calculate the molar mass of magnesium chloride. So just to analyze this um, formula, we have one magnesium and we have two chlorines. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take the molar mass of magnesium. If we look on the periodic table, magnesium has a mass of 24.30. So we're going to take 24.30 and we're going to add it to 2 multiplied by the molar mass of chlorine. So on the periodic table, chlorine is 35.45. So 35.45. And then we're going to run that through our calculator. So we take that all, and I get 95.2 grams per mole as our molar mass, or also sometimes called formula mass of um, magnesium chloride. I mean, we do that with any compound as well, or any atom. But remember, that one mole is equal to 95.2 grams of magnesium chloride. Um, and so we can use that as a conversion factor, and we will soon here. Um, we can also talk about how um, a mole is also equal to 22.4 liters of a gas, and this is going to be gas, at STP. Now, in a previous video, we talked about standard conditions. Well, STP is a little bit different. This is standard temperature and pressure, which is zero degrees Celsius, zero degrees Celsius, or 273 Kelvin. And our pressure conversion, our pressure um, equalities are going to be 760 millimeters of mercury, or 760 torr, or 1 atm, or 101.3 kilopascals. Um, these are, don't worry about memorizing all these. I think you're going to use them enough where you'll memorize a lot of them, but they are given to you on your equation sheet that you'll be getting in AP Chemistry. You do need to know how to convert between Celsius and Kelvin just by adding that 273, and we'll get more into that when we get to gas laws. But know that STP gives you permission, I'll say that again, STP gives you per permission to do a conversion with 22.4 liters. Gases that are not, S not at STP, we will deal with later, and they have a different conversion. So um, for now, today only, and uh, this video only, we're going to talk about if it, it will imply that gases are at STP. Let's look at how we use these, these equalities to do conversions. And we did this in general chem a lot, so we should be relatively familiar with it. So here's the first question. It says, calculate the number of atoms in 2.5 moles of magnesium metal. Um, my known quantity there is 2.5 moles of magnesium. So I'm going to write that down. 2.5 moles of magnesium. That's my known. Um, and then we're looking for the number of atoms of magnesium. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to write atoms on the top over here. And um, because I have mag uh, moles to atoms, I'm going to use the conversion factor of one mole is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms as my unit factor method. That is a 23 right there. And so um, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms goes on top. That's my numerator. And I'm going to use my conversion factor to put one mole on the bottom. 
Now double check to make sure I set this up right and I am going to make sure that my units are canceling. That's the whole idea of the unit factor method. So moles and moles cancel. So we're just going to multiply these two values together. Okay, my calculator gives me 1.505. I'm going to round off to two sig figs because I have two sig figs as my known. And remember, equalities don't count for um, uh, rounding. So 1.5 times 10 to the 24th. And I'm going to make sure I include my unit atoms because that was the unit I had left. And that would be the correct answer there, 1.5 times to the 24th atoms. Okay, let's go on to the next one here, another example. Calculate the number of grams present in 155 grams of solid carbon dioxide. So again, our known quantity is 155 grams of CO2. So that's our known. And we're looking for number of grams. So we're going to use the equality. Um, well, I think there's a typo there. I just looked at it. Um, the number of grams in 155 grams is obviously 155. That makes life really, really easy. I think I typed something wrong there. Let's let's change this and let's make it the number of moles. Make it a little bit more challenging rather than just telling asking you the other way around. So, <coughs> excuse me. Um, so let's say um, now we have we're looking for moles as our no, our unknown. So. We have moles and grams, and so we're going to use the equality one mole is equal to molar mass in grams, molar mass in grams. And so um, what we need to do is we're going to put one mole on top because those two numbers are tied together on our equality, and we're going to put molar mass on the bottom. So we need to calculate the molar mass of CO2. Again, molar mass calculations, one carbon, which is 12.01, plus two hydrogens, which is 16 plus 16 is 32. And so we're going to do 44.01 grams on the bottom there. This becomes a division problem. And unit factor method, just double checking grams is canceling with grams. We're left with an answer in moles. And when I divide 155 by 44.01, I get 3.5, uh, we'll call it 3.52. Three sig figs is our known quantity, and so we're going to round to three sig figs. Okay, let's look at another problem here. It says calculate the volume in liters of 2.5 times 10 to the 24th atoms of helium at STP. So our known quantity is 2.5 times 10 to the 24th atoms. STP gives us permission to use the equality one mole is equal to 22.4 liters. We have to be at STP to be able to use that equality. Okay, now we also we have a problem here though because we also we have atoms and atoms is one of these two two equalities. So we need to use the equality of one mole is equal to six point oh two times ten to the twenty third atoms as well. So let's use unit factor method to incorporate in both of these equalities to get the correct answer. So we're going to start out with two point five times ten to the twenty fourth atoms. Okay, and we're going to start off with this very first, or the second equality, rather, this equality here, and we're going to put um, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms as the denominator, so that those two values cancel, and we're going to put the equality one mole on top. Okay, then now we're going to go to our second equality, and we're going to put one mole on bottom, and we're going to put the 22.4 liters on top. It's a two-step mole problem. Okay, now the reason why I set those up there, and sometimes students get these mixed up, is watch what I do here. I want to make sure all my units cancel correctly and leave me an answer in liters, which is what I'm after. So atoms cancels with atoms, moles cancels with moles, and we're left with an answer in liters. Um, sometimes students, and I'm even guilty of this, we, they'll leave off units. The problem with that is in the unit factor method, if you leave units off, you don't know if you set the equation up correctly because you just have numbers there and it doesn't guide you to the answer. Okay, so our answer is going to be in liters. And so let me run this through my calculator really quickly. I'm going to multiply straight across the top and divide by Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd on the bottom. Okay, and so I come up with an answer of 93 
and let's see, we have two sig figs. Yep, we'll call it 93 liters. There we go. Okay, on the very last problem here, um, I'm going to show you one more equality that we can use to kind of interconvert. This is important to be able to interconvert between um, atoms within a compound. And so it says, first off, calculate the number of moles of carbon in 12 moles of ethanol. All right. Well, we remember hopefully ethanol is one of those hydrocarbons that we talked about before. Ethanol is one of the, is the, sorry about that, it was a bell. Ethanol has the formula of C2H5OH. So it's asking me to calculate the number of moles in or moles of moles of carbon from moles of ethanol. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to do a conversion factor. And the conversion factor we're going to use is in the one mole of methanol, C2H5OH, we have two moles of carbon. We also have six moles of hydrogen and we also have um, one mole of oxygen. It's just the number of, of atoms within that compound. So we can use that to convert. So we can say that if we have 12 moles of C2H5OH, that means in one mole of C2H5OH ethanol, we have two moles of just carbon by itself. And so we just have to double it. And so it's 24 moles of carbon within that compound. Okay. If we wanted to know the number of moles of oxygen in 12 moles of ethanol, it'd be easy. It would just be 12 times 1 over 1. See how that works? Okay. Um, there, for this, um, and that's the end of this, this is a uh, mole road conversions, um, you will have two quizzes plus one worksheet to do. Um, and this will be the end of summer assignment other than the test review that's going to be assigned.